speaking? Yes. yes. Okay, would you both please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I yes. Do. Thank you. You can both put your hands down, and if you would each uh, state your full name for the record. Jennifer Guttenberg, G-U-T-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. Thank you. And Fred Guttenberg, same spelling, G-U-T-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. Thank you. Nice to see you both. Mrs. Guttenberg, would you like to say something on behalf of your daughter, Jamie? Yes, I would. Please, Please go ahead. So yesterday, I put out a message that I wasn't going to speak. But after yesterday's events, I changed my mind. First, I want to thank you, Judge, for attempting to um, keep this courtroom from being a circus. The state attorneys for all the hard work that they've done for way too many years. The victims advocates in Eagles Haven who have supported us every single day um, beyond imagination, honestly. So, you. You shouldn't be sitting there with a mask on your face. It's disrespectful to be hiding your expressions under your mask when we as the families are sitting here talking to you. Lower down in your seat, hunched over, trying to make yourself look innocent when you're not because you admitted what you did and everybody knows what you did. I felt the need today to remind this court and this entire country, who are the important people here? And that's Jamie, my daughter, and the other 16 victims that were murdered, as well as the 17 that were injured, and countless thousands of mentally injured people from this massacre. They suffered the unimaginable. And as a reminder, there's no question about what happened. Guilt was admitted. I won't take the time to talk about you, because as far as I'm concerned, you deserve zero acknowledgement. I need only to speak about the families who have endured this horror of what you did to our loved ones. Yesterday, the elected public defender said that nobody had to endure what this defense had to endure. Let me just tell everybody what our families have had to endure. For those of you who don't know, there were many rules and restrictions for our families. We were not to wear colors like orange for my daughter or advertising types of clothing or gear related to our loved ones. We weren't to have major reactions or facial expressions from what was being said. We had to be quiet. We didn't make a peep. We couldn't make any verbal sounds. We couldn't use our cell phones in the courtroom, even though the attorneys, the press, and everyone else could use theirs. We weren't to be speaking outside of this courtroom because we were unaware of where jurors might be and may run into somebody. The list goes on and on. And as a reminder, Mr. Weeks, and the rest of the defense attorneys, your client murdered our loved ones in cold blood, hunted them down, shot them over and over until he knew he accomplished his goal and left them for dead with no remorse. In fact, he left amongst the other students and stopped for a Slurpee because he was thirsty after his rampage. I feel our families need to be recognized. Whether in the courtroom or watching from elsewhere, we sat through this entire trial respectfully. We tried not to react while videos of our loved ones were being shown to the jury. We tried not to react when the medical examiner described their horrific injuries. We tried not to react as we were verbally taken through the crime scene step by step. Ms. McNeil waved her hand at us during her closing arguments, like this, talking about these people 
and no matter what the verdict is, that these people will always be suffering from what happened. It was disrespectful. And I'd like to tell you about these people. We are sad, hurt, lonely, empty, and horrified. Yet we are strong, caring, and respectful. Each of us has done our share to try to do positive things every day, regardless of how our lives have been ruined. We have endured the unthinkable and the nonsense of this trial, including the blatant disrespect of this, dissent, this defense team, and now Mr. Weeks. This is a club that nobody wants to be in, but I'm glad that my club is at least with these amazing people. Let me remind everyone again, as other people have, who's important here. Jamie Guttenberg, my beautiful daughter, Nicholas Dwaret, Luke Hoyer, Joaquin Oliver, Gina Montalto, Elena Petty, Kara Loughran, Meadow Pollock, Alex Schachter, Peter Wang, Martin Duque, Carmen Shentra, Helena Ramsey, Alyssa al Hadef, Chris, Chris Hickson, Scott Beagle, and Aaron Feiss. Along with the 17 injured and thousands of others affected, I never want to hear the killer's name again. Let us remember the victims and their legacy. My daughter is Jamie Guttenberg. She is forever 14 and she is amazing still. And that's what I want people to remember. I only decided about 10 a.m. this morning that I was gonna do this. So I scribble down a few things. I may ramble on a bit. If I do, I apologize. I see you're still needing to do your thing, so. Mr. Guttenberg, if you'd like to say something on behalf of your daughter, Jamie. Yes, I would. Please go ahead. Thank you. First, Your Honor, thank you. We've been at this now for almost four and a half, over four and a half years. It's the first time I've actually had this chance to address you directly. <clears throat> which is, I guess, the way this process is supposed to work. I will be honest with you, for the better part of the four and a half years, and they can attest to this, I've probably been angry at you more often than not because I didn't know the process. And every time there was a ruling that I felt wasn't good for the prosecution, I got annoyed. Every time I saw these these things coming up from the defense that took up time, that delayed us, that are the reason we're now four and a half years out, I got annoyed. And I kept on saying to them, why can't the judge do more? Why can't the judge do more? And I, I, I need to just, I need to say to everyone here at this table, you are the most amazing group of people I've ever been connected to. And I thank you because your ability to make sure I understood every bit of it to make sure that everything the judge was doing was to ensure there couldn't be a call for a mistrial. We heard that often. Or some kind of, um, you know, should this have resulted in the death penalty, an appeal. You always helped me to understand it and to keep me engaged in the process in a way where we kept going forward together. But you see, for our families, that also meant doing it in silence because we couldn't go public. We couldn't complain. We couldn't act out. And so I want to thank you because at the end of this process, you have been nothing but decent, fair, and firm. And I just, I want you to know that. So I'm going to let everyone know something. Last week, I sat with you, Attorney Sachs, in his office, watched the video of you. I'm glad I get to see your face right now. Of you killing my daughter for the very first time. You see, all those video evidence that was shown in this courtroom, we didn't see it. Maybe that was to protect us, to protect the public. We didn't see it. But heading into this week, I was searching for answers for clarity. 
And I sat with attorney Satz and I watched you kill my daughter on video. And unfortunately, I saw you killing many of the others as well. I saw you enjoying it. And I saw also what I expected of my daughter, who was the toughest human being on the face of the earth, running for her life down the hallway. And the thing is, my daughter made it to within one second of being alive. She actually made it into the stairwell. You shot her with a single shot. You severed her spinal cord, her chest filled with blood in the stairwell. You did that. You did that to the other 16 as well. After I sat with Mike, I did what I often do. I went to the cemetery looking for guidance from Jamie for strength. And I walked away from the cemetery realizing no matter the outcome of the verdict, nothing changed. Jamie's still at the cemetery. Nothing changed. I'm still a dad who spent every day dreaming of walking his daughter down the aisle, who now will have to endure a lifetime of the reality that I won't get to walk my daughter down the aisle. There are, actually by a show of hands, anyone else in this room because of him going to have to endure not watching people they love get married? I am a person who has to endure the fact that my daughter is not in the college of her dreams because of you. Out of curiosity, does anyone else in this room have to endure the fact that their loved ones aren't in college? Because of you, I've had to endure spending Father's Day. My wife has had to endure spending Mother's Day. We've had to endure spending our time for birthdays at a cemetery. Anyone else because of him have to endure those things? Yeah. Anyone who claims that they had to endure anything close to what we endure, you may want to rethink your language and your choice of words just a bit. I look at you sitting there right now, looking the way you should have looked through the entire trial, like a convicted murderer, in your prison outfit, shackled. It is still incomprehensible to me that when we went through the penalty phase of this trial, which you were already a convicted murderer for, that you were able to sit there looking like howdy doody in whatever outfit they felt like putting you in for the day. Your hairstyle, your mask on, your seat really low like a little boy. Faking out the jury as to who you really are. We endured months of watching that show. It was BS. But you put on a great show, I'll tell you that. You did your job. You got him from not getting the death penalty. You all can't understand the pain that we go through. But what I will say is that statement yesterday, I actually believe it, that Public Defender Weeks believed it. I actually think you all believe it, that you've endured something worse than us, which is why you've behaved the way you have with us. Months we've been here, not a single one of you has actually ever even looked in our direction, made an effort to say, we're sorry for your loss, ever. Now, I understand you had a job to do defending the indefensible, defending a mass murderer of 17 people. I understand that was hard, and you were doing your job as you were required to do. But I'm not sure anywhere along the way there was a requirement that you give up your humanity and you give up your decency, but you did. That was a choice you made. I've got your email apologizing for the middle finger stunt. I have it, okay? Laughing with him as you're doing it. And the crazy thing is, I've reread it multiple times. You actually didn't apologize to us. 
You apologize that you didn't know the camera was on while you were doing that, that you got caught. That's what we've had to endure, okay? Because we've always seen you all turning this into that. But again, you didn't get the death penalty. You did your job. I hope you're all proud of yourselves. You know, I believe in the Ringo Starr philosophy of life, peace and love. I do. So with that, I need to address some of the other comments from Mr. Weeks yesterday, suggesting that our families were inciting violence, comparing it to what happened to Speaker Pelosi. <laughs> When that happened yesterday, my wife, I, I started screaming in the house. So what I need to let you all know, all of our families, because of what you did, I didn't know them before. I knew nothing about them. We've all got to know each other. And every single one of these families, because of what you did, is doing amazing things in this country today in the name of safety, in the name of saving lives, in the name of making sure our schools are safer, our streets are safer. I travel this country. I haven't worked since what you did, a real job anyway. I travel the country going to harass politicians to make sure we can do more to reduce gun violence. That's what I do now. And along that path, since we, Mr. Weeks brought up the name Speaker Pelosi yesterday, implying we're trying to incite some kind of violence, here's the crazy thing. Because of what I do, I actually know Speaker Pelosi. I know her well. And anyone who follows my story knows she's a really important person to me in my life. And so I don't know if Public Defender Weeks is in the room or not, but for him to have trivialized and minimize that real act of violence to make a moronic, stupid point? Shame. That's all I can say. Shame. I'm going to end with this. For almost five years, we've been silent. We were silent through this trial. We sat here. We held it in. But I'm going to share something personal. On the day of the medical examiner visits where they discussed Jamie. I need you all to know, because this gets back to the word endure, what we endure, that while I was sitting there, I was having chest pains and shortness of breath. And you want to know, I didn't say a word, because I didn't want to hear you call to the judge, because it happened in front of the jury and asked for a mistrial. And so I sat there with chest pains. And the second the public, I'm sorry, the second the medical examiner finished talking about my daughter, my wife immediately got me out of the room. And I ended up with weeks of testing from a cardiologist, and thankfully I am okay. I have a broken heart, but I am okay. But the need to sit here silently while you all did what you did, while you had a neighbor who you put on this little show running around the room who didn't really know him. He lived in a house behind a house across the street, met him once in person. He ended up under cross-examination acknowledging that. You actually spoke about the neighbor in your closing statement, but the neighbor didn't actually know him. Okay, We watched this. We endured this. And yeah, it got to be too much at times that I developed a health issue over it. But again, I am okay, and I'm going to be okay, and I am going to go forward with my wife, and we are going to continue to build our foundation, our orange ribbons for Jamie, and everyone else back there, they're going to continue to build their amazing foundations, doing all the amazing work that they do. Just so you know, because of you, our foundation is starting a new program called Pause of Love. We're going to be providing emotional support dogs to victims of gun violence. So the next time somebody does what you did, we'll be there for them. That's who we are. To suggest for one second 
that we would be the kinds of people, or anyone back there would be the kinds of people who sh would incite violence, y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. But you said it. Can't take it back now. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm only looking to see two more things happen today. One will be your formal sentencing of him. And the other one, I want to see Gordon Weeks resign before the end of the day today. Thank you.